Hello, I'm Shlok and you're watching Tech Burner. We had a lot of expectations from Lollipop, but as it came out, there were a lot more amount of problems as compared to previous versions of Android than there were features that came with it. So in this video, I will rant about 10 problems that came with Lollipop and why Lollipop sucks. Not good for AMOLED screens. As you all know, Lollipop is very eye candy. It looks beautiful. There's a lot of white and uh, colorful theming. But the problem with AMOLED displays is that they consume double the amount of power when white content is displayed on the screen as compared to IPS displays. But they conserve more power when uh, there's total dark content on the screen. And as Lollipop has 0% of pure black in its theming, so it's not so AMOLED friendly and it takes a lot more battery on AMOLED displays. Slope. When Lollipop was first launched, remember how Google kept saying how Lollipop is so smooth, all the animations run at 60 frames per second. Uh, the animations are smooth, that's not a problem. They might be running at 60 frames per second, I can't make out. But the pre-rendering of those animations takes a lot more amount of time than previous versions of Android like KitKat or Lollipop. If you're switching between Android versions, if you're going from Lollipop to KitKat or Lollipop to Jelly Bean, you would notice a drastic difference in performance because of the pre-rendering of the animations. Going more towards closed source. Android, when it first started, it was open source. The motto was open source, everything was open source. All the apps built into Android was open source. But now, Google has stopped supporting AOSP. They're not actually interested in AOSP. AOSP is Android open source project, the open source part of Android. Most of the AOSP apps have not been material themed and they have been replaced by closed source Google apps like Chrome, Google Camera, Android Calendar, Google Camera, etc, etc. Google was the one that started with this open source thing and when they're stopping this, it doesn't look good on their part. Design faults. There are a lot of design faults in Android Lollipop. The first one would be the power off button. When you press and hold the power off button, uh, only the power off button comes up. I don't know why they're still calling it the power off menu and not the power off button. There's no airplane mode, no uh, silence mode, no ringer facilities. And the next would be the end call button. The end call button is too small. For 5.5 inch phones, there's just a red dot that if you're not looking at the screen, you can't make out if it's there or not. You can't press it if you're not looking at the screen. And for tablets, it's even poorer. Bugs. Lollipop has a lot of bugs. When it, uh, when it first launched, it had serious amount of bugs, security issues and all. But even after two updates, 5.0.1 and 5.0.2, there are still a lot of bugs that are not being fixed. And they, they include Wi-Fi bugs, Bluetooth bugs, playback box. There are a lot of playback box on Nexus 7. I've given a link in the description below. If you want, you can check out the box that Lollipop still has. Heads up notification. The heads up notification is the notification that comes up when you get a text message or a group message or any kind of notification comes up. When you're browsing the web on Chrome and you want to click the link on the top, you can't click it because there's a notification panel that block that's blocking it. You can't hide it, you can't mute it, all you can do is dismiss it. And even if you dismiss it, it keeps coming back. When you're playing a game and you're on a WhatsApp group, the message keeps popping up. And <laughs> if it's a crucial moment in the game, you're surely going to lose it. For the last time, this is not the recent panel, it's not the task manager, it's not the task killer. This is the overview screen. The overview screen. And this is only used to switch between applications and not close them. You're only supposed to close an application when your phone is getting slow. And if your phone is getting slow, it's a bug in itself. Android has a built-in task manager that closes an app when the amount of free RAM goes beyond a certain level. There are a lot of memory leaks in Lollipop. A memory leak is when uh, a process that's running in the background is using more amount of memory 
than it's supposed to use. Just for an example, if I open Chrome in the in the foreground and it's taking 200 MB memory, it should be taking less amount of memory when it's in the background. But if it's still taking 200 MB memory in the background, it's a memory leak. When some application, when it has been given an amount of memory for temporary use and it uses the same amount of memory even when we are not using it, it's a memory leak. There are a lot of memory leaks in Lollipop. It, it is a big reason why Lollipop is so slow. The, the volume management on Lollipop is not as good as the previous Android versions. There are three modes, a total ringer mode in which, in which everything works, there's a silent mode in which nothing works, not even the alarms work, and there's a priority mode which prevents some notifications from actually notifying you. Most people I meet, they use the priority mode such that they turn off all the notifications and turn on the alarm. So what's the use of priority notifications at the first place? App incompatibility. A lot of app incompatibility came with Lollipop because of a new API level and because of the new theming that it has. There were a lot of UI bugs, but Developers were given time for that and still a lot of root apps are broken because of the new security features that came with Lollipop and they're not uh, they're not actually developer friendly. It took a lot of effort to root Lollipop and you have to flash a new kernel to actually able to root Lollipop. Expose doesn't work that well on Lollipop. Viper for Android also didn't work for quite some time. Most of the game hacking applications also don't work with Lollipop and they're still not working. I don't know when they will work and the list is unending. There are a lot of apps that don't still don't work on Lollipop and the developers are really trying very hard but it's been tough for the developers because of the security features that came with Lollipop. I think they're unnecessary. I have seen so many people heartbreaking their phones when they downgrade from Lollipop to KitKat. A lot of Moto G users have heartbreak their phone when they're downgrading from Lollipop to KitKat and this is also because of the security features that came with Lollipop. The bootloader that comes with Lollipop, if you flash it once, it prevents you from flashing any older version of bootloader. So if you flash a KitKat bootloader over a Lollipop bootloader, it would heartbreak your phone. Heartbreak means your phone is completely useless, it's completely dead. And I'm yet to see any Moto G user that has heartbreak their phone get back. That's it guys. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe. Sorry for hurting a few sentiments if I did and stay with me for more videos.